Good morning. Uh, this is Dr. Kusuma from Surya Cosmetic Surgery. Um, as is a habit of mine, uh, you know, every time I get an opportunity to share some information for you, uh, you know, for educational purposes, I do that. Um, I see, saw a couple of post-operative patients already this morning who are post-operative from facelift surgery. Um, and one of the things that I notice um, constantly from patients, I think it's just subconscious, unconscious behavior, is that there's a tendency to want to touch, you know, the surgical site and just to feel it. Because, you know, things are different, you know, they just start trying to make sure things are okay, even for breast surgery for that matter, they're constantly lifting up the breast and kind of looking at the incision and touching it. And it's just this touching uh, that uh, patients frequently do, although they're not pushing and doing anything crazy, but they still touch it. So let's just talk about good habits uh, for surgery. So, you know, when we are, you know, using our hands, um, we are animating, you know, we're doing things like, like me, I'm just kind of expressing myself and I'm touching here, I'm touching my face, I'm doing all kinds of things. In COVID era, it's even more important that we have good habits uh, and conscious habits that we develop. So imagine in the last a minute that I've been talking, I've touched the table, I've touched my face, I've maybe adjusted my glasses and I've, you know, I'm doing all kinds of things and I don't know uh, what the surfaces have phones right you know constantly picking up phones and using the screen you're at the coffee shop and you put it there you kind of went and picked up coffee look at how much transmission of stuff that happens and in covid era it, it was important for us to be conscious of that right our personal space um, and in surgery it should be similar uh, especially early parts of surgery, early post-operative phase, because there's fresh wounds, uh, there's incisions that have not healed yet. Um, and so it's very important that we are very particular about what we do. So one of the good things to do is always wash your hands, okay? Always, always wash your hands. I'm personally not a big fan of uh, these, uh, you know, these... Uh, 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 squeezy bottles that give you those uh, liquids to just kill everything, uh, those sterilizers. I prefer hand washing with soap and water. And soap doesn't have to be anything special. It could be just general soap, but just make sure you lather it well all across and wash it well. Um, and every opportunity you get to do that, you should do that, especially during the post-operative phase, you know, so that your hands are constantly clean and you can moisturize them afterwards. Let's just say you have to do a dressing change or kind of apply some ointment on your incisions or somebody else has to. There's no reason really uh, to uh, be worried about touching an incision with your bare hands. There isn't. Uh, you can use gloves if you'd like, but gloves also come from a box. They're not sterile either because they're not sterile gloves. So they are no better than using your hands in many cases. Please remember, many people feel like when you wear gloves, suddenly something is better. These gloves that come in a box, general gloves, they're not sterile gloves, all right? They're no better, are actually maybe worse than very clean hands that have been just washed in many cases. If you are going to use gloves, it's good to have the gloves clean also because they're coming from unsterile boxes. So my recommendation simply is to use your own hands. All right, because it's your own tissues. So if you have to do a dressing change, if you have to do anything, wash your hands very, very, very well. Do what you have to do. Um, and if you use a glove, clean it well, the glove with alcohol or something like that on the surface once you put it on so that the gloves are really clean and then you can use that. And when you're doing it, be purposeful about it. Don't touch so one of the things that I recommend people do is that have everything you need laid out right with you, right in front of you. If somebody's helping, just make sure you do the same because once you start the process, you don't want to be opening drawers or cabinets or going here and there and touching again new things because then you have to wash your hands again. So one of the things I tell people is that prepare as if you're getting ready for dinner. Put everything that you need right in front of you, readily accessible. Then wash your hands and then use what you need to do and only touch your face and your face only or the surgical site more likely. And then once you're done with it, then wash your hands again, put things away and do not touch your face again, all right? If you have to touch your face again, wash and go through the same protocol. So all day long, you're very conscious of what your hands are doing, what they're touching and what they're not touching. This is extraordinarily important for not only your health, but for your loved ones as well. Because imagine uh, uh, an incision that is maybe has some wet drainage there, right? Something oozing. 
And if you constantly keep touching it with your hand, which many people do surprisingly, and then without realizing or forgetting, you touch something else in your household or in your car and somebody else comes and touches that. Now that's how transmission happens, right? So one of the most important things to do is to be conscious and aware of what your hands are touching in the post-operative period. Very, very important thing to do. Um, washing, also many people say, should I use antibacterial soap? Should I use something special? Actually, not necessary. If you lather up well, if you use normal water, it's totally okay to use. If you want to use sterile water, it's okay to use also because you know you have an extra degree of protection, but it's not necessary as long as you use soap and lather up the site very well. Well, many times people say, well, you know, my doctors are, we never used to do that, but that's old school thinking. One of the most important things people should realize is that if you have a wound and it's got some drainage on it, that drainage is active media for anything to grow on it or anything to be attracted to it or anything to sit on it because it's sticky. So you have to do mechanical debridement of it so that the area is clean and you keep anything that's sitting on it, the load of it very, very low. So the best way to do that is to just clean it with soap and water and get all that stuff off. So anything that sits on the surface is washed away. All right. Uh, one other thing, all incisions, all incisions heal better in a moist environment than they do in very dry environment. So it's my recommendation to patients always to put a very thin coat of moisturizer on it all the time. Um, if um, there's uh, 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 understanding or, or, or feeling that, well, I want to dry it out because people associate drying something out with healing, but you're slowing down the speed of healing if the wounds are dry. It's been proven in laboratories, it's been proven in wound technology, it's been proven in many models that any incisions, any sites that are wounds always heal better, okay, when you have slight moisture on the surface because the tissues need that for proper function. So I recommend people to keep incisions slightly moist with a moisturizer called Aquaphor. So another important concept. So cleanliness, consciousness of what your hands are doing and touching, and keeping the incision slightly moist are always good things to do. So I hope that's clear. Um, one other myth I want to bust is that people are very quick to go to using hydrogen peroxide. I clean it with peroxide every day. Peroxide is good to use when you have a contaminated wound if you fell outdoors somewhere and you have dirt in your wound. Okay, but for surgical sites, peroxide is not necessary. It actually, again, may impede the speed of healing. So in healthy patients who don't have any medical conditions, and usually in plastic cosmetic surgery, that's usually the case, you don't really need uh, any type of hydrogen peroxide or special you know, abrasive agents. You just need to be clean. And as a matter of fact, like I said, it may even harm the speed of healing if you use hydrogen peroxide, so don't need to use it. Uh, so don't be very quick to reach to all these abrasive elements. Use normal soap, normal water, keep it clean, keep it moist, make sure hands are very much uh, you know, in your awareness and consciousness that you're not touching things and touching the operative sites frequently. Animals, do not have animal dander next to you in your bed, on your bed sheets, or on your hands when you pet the dog or pet the cat or whatever and then without realizing do something because you suddenly feel something so very important if you have pets and many of us do you have to be aware of what you're doing with the pet also and so that you don't cross contaminate because you know dogs go everywhere and they're you know sniffing and rolling over everything and so important to do avoid that as well always good to have clean bed sheets on your bed made out when you have surgery and you know frequently change them if you need to so that again you don't want anything sticky to stay on the pillow covering or the bed sheet covering things like that and it's always best to be you know most of the time by yourself in the bed and not with anybody else because again it's much more comfortable you know you have to create a personal space for yourself during the post operative phase the rest of the details of course you know we at the office will you know educate you on and guide you and if there's any specific questions because it's hard to cover every scenario those are general rules Okay, I hope that's helpful to you guys. Uh, if you have other questions, other information that you're seeking, please go to our YouTube channel, Surya Plastic Surgery. There's a lot of educational content there of various topics, uh, and you can find information there. So, thank you.